What happens when a decent person is involved with a narcissist? This is what trauma bonding with a narcissist does to a decent person. Have you ever wondered how a radiant soul can dim and wither in the shadow of a malignant narcissist? How someone so initially dazzling can fade to a hollow ghost trapped in trauma's thrall? This agonizing alchemy plays out daily across the world, as decent people bond tightly to those bent on breaking them. Call it Stockholm Syndrome, Soul Theft, The Devil's Bargain. By any name, it is a harrowing hijacking no one deserves. Today we will trace this torturous transformation by stepping through the seven savage phases of trauma bonding. Each phase highlights the narcissist's devilry and the decent person's increasing loss of light, will, and self. Witnessing this psychological vivisection makes one thing clear. The narcissist's soul-twisting cruelty is the root of damage, not any defect in the target. With truth's lamp held high, trauma bonds wither and fall away, restoring freedom to the captives. If you have chosen to leave a relationship and go no contact with a narcissistic partner, the video in the description below titled, When You Go No Contact, The Narcissist Does This Every Day and Why, can provide guidance on setting boundaries and finding strategies for this difficult transition. Now let's understand the hidden realities of trauma bonding with a narcissist for decent souls. Phase 1, Love Bombing. It began brightly enough, with dreamy days adrift in affection's stream. Each conversation glittered, unveiling shared hopes, quirks, and intimacies. Possibilities shimmered like sunlight on water, twin flames converging, soulmates uniting at last. They seemed so present and caring, attentive to your every word and mood. No one had ever made you feel so appreciated, understood, seen. Trust bloomed as they tended your unfolding spirit like a nurturing gardener, acknowledging inner traits long left thirsty in the drought of disregard. But this primeval Eden held a viper in its grassy midst, one determined to strike as soon as defenses lowered. For now, the future glimmered with promise, but shadows gathered on the horizon, awaiting their chance to extinguish the dawn. Phase 2. Trust and Dependency with love bombing's pleasant mists still swirling through mind and body, small changes slipped into the landscape. Conversations centered increasingly on them, their dramas, demands, dilemmas dominating shared hours. Meanwhile, your social sunsets reddened beautifully less often. Friends and family featured in anecdotes less frequently. Weekends once lively with varieties of connection narrowed to focus on a single face. Financial freedom eroded slowly, too. Lunch dates, gifts, getaways costing more than the still new relationship provided in joy or security. Attempts to discuss this imbalance were met with guilt tripping, anger, or wounded withdrawal. So you worked longer hours, tightened budgets, and held confusions in. For now, love conquered all. Until the day clarity cracked the fantasy with questions. Why do they rage when I state a need? Why am I afraid to be anything but positive in their presence? Like thick creeping vines, confusion and dependence had entwined to bind you fast to a volatile force. Still reluctant to name it abuse, you resolved to simply love them better, give more, be less. You would water this relationship into the sanctuary you suspected it could become. Phase 3 Devaluation Once assured of your fidelity, the narcissist's sweet facade corroded, revealing a hunger to erode your self-worth and feed on your anguish. Their once occasional jabs sharpened into swords, skating across your soul unchecked. One day you dared invite a long-lost friend to dinner, hoping to reconnect. But the narcissist erupted, assailing you with accusations of betrayal, threatening to walk out for good. Stunned by the verbal vitriol, you canceled the dinner, made amends for upsetting them. But inside, something essential broke, some cardinal knowledge that no one deserves treatment like this, not ever. In earlier phases, love had covered every wound, explained away every red flag. But seeds of self-doubt now rooted in your psyche's darkened cracks, germinating into thoughts like, they are right, I'm too difficult, too dramatic, too demanding, too naive, too everything I must try harder to please them, quiet my tongue, shrink myself. I must be worthy of love. Their cruel projections corralled your truth into smaller spaces, warping your self-concept badly. Soon you monitored every word and action to avoid further explosions, becoming hypervigilant to their moods while numb to your own accumulating trauma. Phase 4. Manipulation and Gaslighting By this point, the narcissist no longer bothered concealing their contempt for vulnerability. They wielded your openness as ammunition against you. Dark tactics like ghosting, cheating, comparing you unfairly to exes intensified, keeping you perpetually off-kilter, anxious and raw. 
you began confronting them more often despite the futility and wounds of previous attempts. You were determined to hold them accountable, clarify how their actions undermined your sense of safety and self in this tortured relationship. But they avoided accountability as if allergic, reflexively blaming you each time for any relationship problems. Your legitimate concerns were dismissed as annoyances, products of your excessive sensitivity, anxiety, neediness, imagination. Their soul-decaying behavior was, according to them, just harmless joking around which you hysterically misinterpreted. Each time confusion thickened around you like frost settling on a window pane, obscuring intuition's clear sight lines. You questioned your own experience even as your psyche screamed this mistreatment was so very wrong. Still clinging fast to fraying fantasy bonds, you ignored the voice yelling a truth you weren't ready to acknowledge. This was not love but something sinister parading as such. Phase 5, Resignation. Warped in spirit, eroded emotionally and teetering cognitively from months or years of mistreatment, your will finally cracked beneath the narcissist's bulk. With a soul-tired sigh, you relinquished naive notions they would change or make amends. You accepted no competitor could exist for their heartlessness. So you adapted, not to them, but to the harsh reality that this relationship would never provide reciprocity, stability, or basic decency. You resigned yourself like a defeated army column marching brokenly under enemy fire. You swallowed protests when they raged over small incidents or canceled commitments lacking viably excuses. You bore their blaming, shaming, and scorning in mute acceptance like oxen tolerating heavy yokes. Bits of your personality faded as pretense replaced authentic self-expression. You projected calm around their sulking silence, biting remarks and simmering coldness. Inside, you numbly amended broken dreams, shelving any last hope of tender connection. Now survival alone mattered. Phase 6, Loss of Self By this late tortured phase, the narcissist had invaded your psyche utterly, commandeering your life's steering wheel while you rode trapped in the trunk, gagged and blindfolded. Their viral thought patterns infiltrated your neural pathways, reconfiguring your personality to replicate their projected ideal woman. Your creativity, passions, preferences withered under malnourishment. Pleasing your abuser became your purpose, their pathological point of view slowly replacing your ability to interpret yourself and your reality. Cognitive dissonance and survivor's guilt dominated any quiet moments not dedicated to serving your captor. In forgetting how to be, you became little more than an instrument played by a cruel musician, an actor in an unwanted film working from someone else's deranged script. Yet inwardly, you noticed these subtle soul violations accumulating like snowdrifts blocking inner doorways, making the bright rooms of natural self inaccessible. Your complainant cries rang out wordlessly in dreams and random flashes of truth piercing the darkness of delusion temporarily. But awakening proved impossible with trauma bonds still intact, chaining you firmly to malignant illusions. And this painful unlived life stretched on. Phase 7, Addiction. In the excruciating final phase, intermittent reinforcement took hold with all the obsessive intensity of addiction. The narcissist administered just enough random rewards, crumbs of tenderness, admissions of regret for some mistreatment, superficial changes in behavior, to spark desperate hope that this soul-damaging dynamic might truly shift. These flashy breadcrumbs momentarily severed the cognitive dissonance that arose when you confronted their cruelty. Triggers of the bonding hormones, oxytocin and cortisol, compelled you to renew futile efforts invested in them and this toxic treadmill. And the heightened emotionality imprinting this traumatic enmeshment indelibly onto your reward circuitry rendered leaving profoundly difficult. Fear of painful withdrawal symptoms gripped your days during moments of clearer insight. Even if self-preservation briefly won out, provoking efforts toward independence, the narcissist wielded well-learned tools to hoover you back under their thrall. All compasses towards freedom pointed stutteringly back to the only reality you now knew, enslavement to mistreatment disguised as love. In studying the seven sinister phases of pathological bonding, Clarity arises for targets regarding their contribution versus the narcissists to this painful dynamic. Far from implying victim-blaming, this insight seeds power, reminding trauma-bonded souls their light still shines inviolable beneath the crushing dimensions of cruelty and control. In the bondage of darkness dwells the choice for liberty's life. I hope this breakdown of effects of trauma bonds with narcissists has empowered you to release any misplaced guilt and focus on your own healing journey.
If you're already on the path of healing, be sure to monitor your self-talk and check out this video. Recovering from Narcissistic Trauma, Soothing Sleep Affirmations for Self-Care, the link is in the description below. Be sure to monitor negative self-talk and seek support through resources like therapy, online groups, and videos on recovering from narcissistic abuse. Please like, subscribe, and donate if you're able to support exposing narcissists' covert emotional manipulation. Together we can heal, prevent further victimization, and raise awareness. The power rests firmly in your hands. Know the signs, trust your instincts, and refuse to surrender your spirit. You deserve to be seen, heard, and cherished by those worthy of access to your light. I believe in you.